Should you consider the Loom network and is Loom ready to zoom? My name is Guy and in this video I'm going to give you everything that you need to know about the project. Just a few quick disclaimers before we go any further. Firstly, this should not be interpreted as investment advice and I am nobody's financial advisor. Also, the Coin Bureau is completely independent. We don't take any payments for our reviews. And finally, if this is your first time with us, then you may want to tap that subscribe button. We release regular daily videos that you don't want to miss. So, with that out of the way, let's get right back to the Loom Network. The Loom Network is a blockchain development platform where users can build their own social and gaming-focused decentralized applications, that's dApps. Originally, the network was focused on dApp development in the Ethereum ecosystem, but has expanded their integrations to include other developer blockchains. The project is also focused on scalability, where each of the dApps will be built in their own unique sidechains, so no bloating the main chains. The Loom network also includes a user-friendly software development kit that could simplify the process of building a dApp. Developers have taken note. There have already been a number of dApps that have been built on the network, but before I get into that, let's take a quick look at their technology. The Loom network is itself an Ethereum-based sidechain. Both the network itself and the dApps that run on it are independent from the Ethereum mainchain. In fact, the Loom developers have termed these dApps as dApp chains. Even though these dApp chains are built as their own network, they are also able to interact with each other. In other words, they are interoperable. This interoperability also extends to value transfer. As long as at least one Loom is being staked in a connected wallet, two different dApps can exchange tokens. The Loom SDK, that's Software Development Kit, supports the Ethereum virtual machine and sidechains can be built with any consensus mechanism and rule set. Pretty impressive. So what are some of those dApps that have been built on the Loom network? Well, firstly, you have CryptoZombies. This was one of the first dApps built on the Loom network by the Loom developers themselves. It's an interactive code school that will help new developers build their own collectible-based blockchains. Once you've built your crypto zombies, you can even battle others in the zombie battleground. Pretty cool. Currently, crypto zombies has been used by over 300,000 people, so there is demand for these dApps. Another dApp that was built by the Loom team is called Delegate Call. This is a Q&A site where users earn karma points when their answers are upvoted by other users. Third-party developers have also been busy launching their own dApp chains. For example, you have the likes of Axie Infinity, which is a collectible battle creature game featuring the cute Axie characters. Well over 88,000 Axies have been created, so it is catching on. Another game that I found quite interesting was Battle Racers. This is an arcade game where you can build, race and battle cars on arcade-sized tracks. These are only some of the dApps that have been built on the Loom network. You can check out our complete Loom review below if you want more info. Now, another central component of the Loom network has to be their Loom token. This is an ERC20 utility token that will provide the fuel for the Loom network. Basically, Loom is used in order to run the dApps and execute the smart contracts. Interestingly though, Loom tokens were integrated with the Binance chain so they can also be used as BEP2 tokens. Loom tokens were issued in an ICO that took place in January of 2018. This was a private sale ICO where 55% of the token supply was sold for just over $25 million. So it's a well-funded project. Loom prices had a massive rally in May of 2018 when they reached all-time highs of over 40 cents. Sadly though, prices have fallen considerably since then, a reality faced by many of the altcoins out there. Let's not dwell too much on that though, and instead let's take a look at who is behind the Loom network. The Loom network was founded by Matthew Campbell, Luke Zhang and James Duffy in 2017. They have a breadth of experience in blockchain development, marketing and software engineering. The company is based in Thailand and has listed over 35 employees on their LinkedIn. 
Luminous developers have been quite active over the past few months. For example, there have been a number of commits that have been pushed to their GitHub repositories. I've linked to this below if you wanted to dive in yourself. As mentioned, the project was privately funded and is an alumnus of Techstars, a well-known tech startup incubator. So, quite a lot of important backers are behind this project. Moving on though, I want to take a quick look into the Loom token markets. Currently, Loom is listed on a few decent exchanges. These include the likes of Binance, Upbit, Huobi and LaToken. It's also listed on a few other exchanges, but these are less reputable. Loom trading volume appears to be relatively well spread out across these exchanges, so not too concentrated. To get a bit of a closer look, I jumped into the Loom Bitcoin order books on Binance. They're pretty deep and wide, which implies relatively easy execution, i.e. limited slippage. When it comes to offline storage, this is pretty simple as it's an ERC20 token. Really, any wallet that supports Ethereum will do. So then, what do I really think of the Loom network? Well, I'm cautiously optimistic. The project is no doubt one of the foremost Ethereum-based gaming and collectible platforms. There are others, but they don't appear to have generated as much traction as Loom has. Moreover, I like the fact that they're now diversifying their integrations. They're moving beyond Ethereum to other developer blockchains, including Tron, EOS and Cosmos. The project is also well-funded and led by a strong team that has been actively rolling out updates to the network. It's also great to see that there are so many third-party gaming dApps being built on the network. This shows that adoption is progressing within the community. Yet I would be lying if I said that there were no challenges. Loom prices remain deeply depressed and there are other on- and off-chain scaling solutions that could provide alternative dApp development environments. It will no doubt be interesting to see whether the Loom network is able to grow in the niche that it has crafted for itself. And there we are, my review of the Loom network. Anyways, let me know. What do you think of the Loom network? Do you have any questions for me? Hit me up in the comments below. And of course, if you found this overview helpful, then don't forget to like and subscribe for the content that you do not want to miss.